Hey guys, Man here, and today I'm going to be showcasing uh, a rover I built using the new hydrogen engines uh, that were recently added to Space Engineers in the most recent update. So, uh, uh, this rover here I've made, uh, it's meant to be a trade outpost. Uh, it does have a lot of weapons here, but since rovers aren't very good at like battles in general in this game, this is mainly for defensive purposes, it wouldn't be very smart to bring this into a battle. This is mainly just to show off the new hydrogen engine and see like how effective it is at generating power. Um, so you enter through the rear here. Um, you got an airlock. It is pressurized inside, so you don't need to have your own bottles and stuff. Uh, so the idea of this is that it's a trade ship of some sort. So this whole area, any neutral people from neutral factions or anyone in your faction. Can, like sit in this area or use it you know for trade for example you got a connector so you can grab the resources of the ship there's a there's a two small cargo containers so it couldn't carry very much ore but it could carry a lot of ingots since they're so light so it's mainly meant for like high-end trade not really like stuff like ice or anything um so of course you can see the sign says members of neutral factions are prohibited from proceeding past this point um, and we'll see how that's enforced in a second there, second here. Um, and before I leave this room, I would like to mention these two interior turrets uh, are set to not target neutrals, so that way, you know, any neutral people won't get angry at you for shooting them. Um, and there is a fair bit of trust. Uh, the oxygen tanks are stored back here, and some of the conveyoring for some of the turrets are stored back here. But those, uh, all the systems that are back here could be lived without, and that's meant so that if a neutral faction member uh, like, betrays your team, you'd still be fine since you don't necessarily need this. It's all auxiliary and redundant. Alright, so moving on. So that's the neutral area. Over here, it's very cramped. It's the main, uh, like, control area. And you'll see why it's so cramped in a second. Um, but here, there's a turret, and this one is set to target neutral. So this will kill anyone who walks through. And the idea is that if you're walking through here, you won't see it, you know, because it's all the way in the ceiling. So that's what this uh, turret is meant for. There are two vents in this room, just in case one gets broken. Um, and of course, very obvious, just an airtight hangar door here. So we can set these uh, vents to depressurize, which won't do anything because there's no room in the oxygen tanks. Uh, but in survival, that would do stuff. Uh, right, let's open this first door. So door A. And when you open this door, Right? It opens up to show a uh, somewhat large hangar area, which is important for a rover because that'll mean you can put in a scout ship or something. So what I have is this like little microfighter here. And you can fit, uh, I tried four, but I could only really cram in three. You can fit three of these inside here, which allows you to be battle ready for like at any time because you can just, you know, pop up three fighters. Um, you know, to deal with the threat. For example, like that drone over there, you could hide or put some of the, those in here, and that way you wouldn't need pilots. So you could just fly out like a bunch of drones, which would be handy. So before I drive around the rover, let's uh, you know, make sure this works. I can assure you it does, but let's just test it out. So you can see I got this drone here, and basically, you know, it's just a plug it back this way. These microfighters have low amounts of power, but they can take out. So if an enemy drone is going to scout your position, you need to take it out before it can, you know, make a GPS marker. This is the sort of thing you would do. All right, so let's destroy this. Oh, never mind. I'm stupid. Uh, all right, it'll break itself eventually. Um, so that is the, uh, all the, like, auxiliary features of the ship. And, of course, you could just leave this hangar bay, bay open and not put anything there. And you could, uh, fit this area with more cargo containers. I just thought it'd be cool to put it in a hangar, but if you're going for full practicality and you know you'll never take this into any sort of war zone, you could, um, put, fill this place with a large cargo container. Uh, and if you got rid of this hangar door and moved the stuff back, you could probably fit two of them. So that's nice. So as you can see, there are no windows in the ship, so that's meant to keep the cockpit safe because it's very dangerous. Uh, rowers are just finicky in general. You can even break yourself just like on fly ground right here. 
So before we get going though, there are some things we need to change. So the wheel settings, we need to set the off height offset all the way down, so that'll give us way more room in the bottom here. In addition, we need to, uh, I like to up the power a bit, but it really depends on what you're using that chip for. I'm going to reduce the steering angle. Uh, not going to mess with any of that. I'm going to put in more friction since we're on a low gravity area, and I'm going to leave the strength out as so. Pump this up. All right, so uh, I don't have any like control. I don't have any control group sets in the bottom of the uh, toolbar there because there's not a lot, you know, very in-depth stuff you can do with the rover. But as you can see, it's driving pretty well, and it does in fact use the hydrogen engines, as you can see here. All right. Currently, they're not outputting power because we're in creative mode, but in surround mode, that is plenty of power to uh, run the ship and you do need to have ice on hand because there are no uh, hydrogen tanks and that's another thing you could put in this hangar area is some hydrogen tanks um, basically like there's a lot of extra room in this rover so you can kind of just do what you need to do with the ship so let's see how it uh, how it traverses over these hills over here I'm going to slow it down a bit because it, it is quite risky Oh, pretty well. It's good to see. Another thing you could do is you could put uh, thrusters on it. Not enough to lift the rover because then it's just the point kind of being a rover. Um, but just a few to slow down the impact. So if you were on a like high gravity planet, you were really worried about damaging your um, you know, investment here. It's not the prettiest of ships, but it it can do its job uh, fairly well. You know, trading would be easily facilitated with the ship. So um. Yeah, that's actually uh, that's all I got for this video. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this trading rover, and uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the use of the new hydrogen engines for space engineers. Uh, goodbye.